Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi. Today I'm reviewing an HO scale C44-9W locomotive from Scale Trains. My model is detailed and decorated for Union Pacific. Scale Trains offers the rivet counter dash nines in two versions. The factory direct price for the DCC ready version is $194.99. I got my DCC and sound equipped model for $289.99 direct from Scale Trains. I should note that the factory direct prices as this program is being made are about $20 higher than the prices I paid in my previous review of the Scale Train Southern Pacific Dash 9. We'll start the engine at 100 possible points. The model is packed in a sturdy cardboard box. Opening the box reveals an owner's manual with DCC and other information. Soft foam surrounds a two-piece plastic cradle that holds the model. Extra rotating end caps for the trucks are packed in a plastic bag inside the cradle. Flexible plastic on top of the model offers some additional protection against scratches. The handrails on the long hood have foam protectors. This is an excellent box that should do a good job protecting the model for storage and transport. UP9734 was from an order of 40 C44-9Ws built in 1994, numbered 9700 to 9739. These units were rated at 4,380 horsepower and had a 396,000 pound operating weight. Looking at the roster information I could find, it appears that these were the only C44-9Ws that UP bought new. All the other Dash 9s on the UP roster came via mergers with Chicago and Northwestern and Southern Pacific. I was able to find several photos of UP9734 and the model looks to be a very close match. Most of the details look correct down to the latches and the arrangement of the hood doors. It has the low mounted number boards and under the sill mounted ditch lights that are correct for this batch of UP units. GE-9s had at least two styles of truck side frames, and the model has the correct ones for these Union Pacific units. At various times, 9734 appears to have had this style of air conditioner, as well as one that looks closer to the one on this SP unit. GE air conditioners are swappable, and there are several styles of them, so it's sometimes difficult to pin down which one is correct for a locomotive at any given time. Since I don't have a good photo of that side of 9734 when it was new, I'm giving the model the benefit of the doubt here. The only error I found is that the model has the incorrect air filters under the sill for this batch of UP units. Photos show that the front air filters should be larger, like the larger one in Details West Part 139. The rear filter shouldn't be there. I realize that these minor detail errors wouldn't bother some people, especially since the rest of the model seems to be spot on. If you're like me though, you'll want to fix it, and you shouldn't have to do that, so I'm taking 5 points. Photos show 9734 still on UP property in 2019. Sometime between 2012 and 2014, the red sill stripe was changed to yellow. Sometime between 2014 and 2019, the unit was repainted into the UP flag scheme. The paint on the model is opaque and thin enough that it only slightly softens small details like the latches on the doors. The markings are crisp and most of the tiny stencils on the shell are legible with magnification. The only voids are at panel seams where there are gaps in the markings on the real units too. The handrails are made of a flexible plastic that should stand up to modest handling. The stanchions are mostly straight up and down on my model when viewed from the side. One of the things that sets the Scale Trains model apart from other Dash 9 models I've seen is the grill detail. In the radiator area, the grills are see-through and there's a fan housing inside. The trucks have freestanding brake lines. The engineer's side front truck also has a speed recorder and cable. In front, the engine has freestanding wire grab irons, separately applied windshield wipers, and nicely done sand filler hatches. The numbers in the number boards appear to be applied under or on the back of a layer of clear plastic glazing, making them look like numbers behind glass. Lower down, the pilot features working ditch lights, an uncoupling lever, an MU cable, hoses, and a plow that appears to be accurate. The cab side windows don't appear to be openable. They have a smoky tint that makes it harder to see through them. It's hard to see, but inside the cab has a complete interior. The cab has photo etched sunshades and mirrors. In back, the model has more freestanding wire grab irons and the same pilot details as the front, minus the plow. Spare knuckle holders are mounted on the rear pilot, a common UP practice. On top, the general arrangement of the antennas on the cab roof looks correct for the UP units as built. The horn casting is nicely done. I like how the exhaust stack has depth. The hole in it goes down into the model, making it look more realistic than the exhausts on some other GE models I've seen. The radiator grills are a standout feature, with photo etched parts that give them some real depth. Under the sill, there's all the detail that most modelers could want, including airlines, traction motor cables, fuel fillers, and more. All of the axles are powered and all the wheels pick up current. The model has scale trains knuckle couplers on both ends. 
Looking for a match on the horizontal center line, the front coupler is close enough to call it good. The rear coupler is also close enough to call it good. All the wheels are engaged according to the NMRA standards gauge. There is no body wobble. The model weighs 22.5 ounces. Drawbar pull topped out at 4.4 ounces on my force gauge. An average HO scale diesel usually pulls around 2.5 ounces, so this is a powerful engine. I'm running the locomotive on DCC. The engine has an ESU Loksound Series 5 DCC and sound decoder. I haven't changed any of the default decoder settings. Like a lot of DCC decoders, the address is set to 3 by default. F8 toggles the sound on and off and also turns on the number boards, ground lights, and walkway lights. F0 turns on the headlight, which is directional. The forward headlight is on when the locomotive is set to move forward, and the rear headlight comes on in reverse. F6 turns on the ditch lights. These are also directional. The ditch lights don't flash when the horn blows. F12 dims the headlight and turns off the ditch lights. F2 sounds the horn. The length of the toot depends on how long the F2 key is pressed. F1 rings the bell. The model has an ESU power pack that will keep it running for a few seconds if it loses track power. F10 activates the brake function. The locomotive will decelerate according to the momentum settings programmed into the decoder and stop. Pressing F10 again releases the brake and the locomotive will start moving. F4 puts the engine into dynamic brake mode. F9 activates the drive hold feature. This can be used to simulate a heavy train starting on a grade or a locomotive that is coasting. The locomotive runs very smoothly. With the sound off, it's pretty quiet. If you want to take the model apart, first remove the couplers on both ends. Now you can remove the shell. The speaker enclosure is in the rear. The decoder is in the middle. It's connected to the factory light board with a 21 pin plug. If you have the DCC ready version of this model, this is where you'd install the decoder. The wiring between the shell and the chassis is accomplished with some clever contacts, eliminating wires between the two and making it easier to take the shell off. The rear air filter is attached to a small plastic mount. This part is sandwiched between some of the plumbing under the sill. Thankfully, it's not glued, just held in with a couple of pins. I'll gently pry it loose with a small jeweler's screwdriver. Now I can extract the part from the plumbing. This is a common air filter on a lot of modern diesels, so I'll save it and use it on another model. The front air filter is a little more complicated since this one is glued. Technically, both small filters should be replaced with larger ones. Since the inner one is going to be really hard to see, though, I'm just going to replace the outer one. To minimize the chances of collateral damage, I'm going to hold the inner filter with one set of pliers while using another set of pliers on the outer one. The filter came off more or less intact with some piping attached. The detail's west part has a dimple on either side. This is where the piping would attach to the real one. I'm going to drill this out with a number 76 drill bit. Using the dimples as a guide, I'll drill part way into one side, then I'll flip the part around and drill into the other side. The holes should meet somewhere inside the part. This is less risky than trying to drill all the way through in one go, since unless you can drill very precisely, it's hard to know where the drill bit will come out on the other end. Since the model already has a mount for the filter, trying to use the mount that's cast onto the detail part would make it stick down too far. I've cut the mount off the casting and glued a short length of 10 thousandths phosphor bronze wire through the hole I drilled to mimic the piping on the original part. I've used some CA to glue the assembly to the existing mount. I had a little bit of Floquil UP Harbor Mist Gray in my paint stash, so I brushed some onto the filter and wire piping. It's not an exact match for what's on the model, but I think it'll look fine once the model is weathered. Parts that hang down near the trucks can sometimes be problematic. It looks like the new filter won't interfere with the truck swing. I like the results. While I'm at it, I'm going to change over to KD-158 whisker couplers. Both of the couplers ended up slightly low. I filed some material from the tops of the draft gear boxes to fix them. Let's see what we've got. The model had incorrect air filters, so I took 5 points in the prototype accuracy category. That leaves us with 95 out of 100 possible points, which would be an A on a report card. This is a really nice model and it deserves a green signal. I think Scale Trains did a really nice job on this model. If you're looking for some modern era Union Pacific motive power for your HO scale layout, then I think you might like it. If you like this video, then please like and subscribe.
Stay tuned and thanks for watching.